Power 3 came about because of people like you asking me what to do, how to do it, how to be successful. And it came about when I would present like this to groups of people, and I would see board members furiously writing down what I was saying, and then rush the stage after, rush me, put me in the corner and say, do you have that written down? I want to take it back to my staff. I want to take it back to my employees. I want to share with them how to be successful. And I would look at them and I would say, well, no, this is just sort of how I live my life. Because truth be told, I'm a fundraiser and I love asking people for money. And every day I get up and I think, well, who can I ask for money? But I got to somehow organize it. And how I organized it started when I had this boss, when I started working at a university and college, and he found a list of 500 names on my desk. And he said to me, you need to call those 500 people. And I looked at him, and I said, well, I can't call 500 people. I don't have time to call 500 people. You want me to meet with all the deans, all the department heads, all the directors, you want me to do this, and I don't have time to call 500 people. Well, as you all know, arguing with your boss is not a good thing, especially when you're new on the job. Probably not a really smart thing. So I'm sitting there with this printout. For those of you who know, it was the green and white line paper, you know, page after page after page of all these names. And I'm like, how am I going to call this many people? I don't have time to call 500 people. But I had time to call three. And if I called three a day, the days I was at work, Monday through Friday, that would be 15 a week, that would be 60 a month. That would be 780 people I would call a year. I would have actually exceeded his goal by 50% by just calling three people a day. Now, he didn't say I had to connect with them. He didn't say I had to talk to them. He didn't say I had to have a meeting with them. He didn't say I had to raise money. He said I had to call them. But by calling them, I did connect with them. I did get meetings. I did talk to them. And I did end up raising money. So I was like, wow, this, this thing could sort of work. This, you know, doing three things today. So fast forward to, I moved to Chicago. So I did that for seven, eight years. Successful, raised money. Moved to Chicago. And I take a job with an entrepreneur. And it's one of those jobs where you take and you think, the first day on the job, you think, hmm, something seems wrong. And for end of the first month, you know something's wrong. The second month, you realize you've made a mistake. And the third month, I was crying every day on Lake Shore Drive, going home. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Oh my gosh, it's so bad. I was in the process of buying a condo in Chicago, and I don't know about you, but when you buy a condo, you have to have a job. And you check, and they say, so I had to keep this job. And the minute I walked out of the title office, I quit the job. So now I had my condo in Chicago. Then, oh, by the way, I still had a house in the college town that I was going to rent out. And I, my family thought I was crazy. And I had $9,000 in the bank. And they said, what are you going to do? I said, easy. I'm going to get another job. And they go, well, you really don't know anything. Sure. How have you been there three months? You're miserable. You haven't talked to anybody. How are you going to get this job? I said, no problem. I'm going to do three things a day to get a job. So before I could go walk on Lake Michigan, because it was beautiful, it was spring, go to the library. Both of these, by the way, have free associated with them, free things, because when you're not working, you find things to do for free. Or before I can take a nap, I had to do three things to find a job. So I started emailing, started calling, I do three things a day to find a job. And in 20 business days, I had 22 interviews. And 28 days later, I had a job. It happened again in my life. Last year, I had a really tough year. 2013 ended really bad, and 2014 started out horrible. I don't know if you've heard about the polar vortex that hit the Midwest. My pipes burst, my engine blew up, some staff quit, the business model was changed. Oh my gosh, every day I was struggling. Every day I was struggling to, to be positive, to be upbeat. And I had a lot of projects to stop. And I'm the type of person that when I'm stuck, I don't tell anybody what's going on. I don't share with anybody. As a matter of fact, some of my friends say, you actually get quieter. You actually get a lot quieter. We don't hear from you, you know, because, you know, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. So 
a George Bailey moment. And she says, who's George Bailey? <laughs> Okay. 